Fox News host Laura Ingram delivered a monologue last night, and I'll play some of it for you. It should send chills down your spine, any rational person's spine. And it is her outlining what could happen if Trump became president once again. And specifically, it could usher in 50 years of MAGA rule. I want you to think about 50 years of MAGA rule and what could come of that. Not great. We'll talk a lot about it. Then I'll get to, if you've seen a lot of clips floating around of Biden and, oh, he looked in the opposite direction and he was acting weird with the Italian prime minister, etc. I'll show you just how deceptively these are being presented by many Republicans. And to me, it's a sign of desperation. So we start with Laura Ingram, and I think she thinks she's making... <laughs> She definitely does think she's making a case for Trump, when in reality, this should discourage people away from Trump. Your coalition is speeding up the shakedown over the G7. Get the money now for Ukraine before Trump changes course. So there's a sense of anxiety. <laughs> changes course and lets our ally be invaded and taken over. Anxiety, it's nervousness, and I'd say even dread is setting in among the foreign policy elites who were just blindsided in the EU election results. They just don't understand why voters abroad are rejecting what's so wonderful about globalism. And they don't understand why making America great again is now even resonating with our minorities and young people. So we'll see. All Democrats can do is respond with the same old unconvincing lines that they've already tried and they've already failed with. Trump's a dictator. Trump is scary. It's absolutely extraordinary that we have a major party presidential candidate who is so openly endorsing the use of violence in our politics. I am deeply worried uh, about violence as we head into this fall's election. He's on a losing streak. He doesn't have the votes, so he's choosing violence. And that's what this upcoming election is very much going to be about. Well, he's right about how violence is on the ballot. Yeah, that's right, Eric. The violence carried out by their hardcore act activists, and by the way, the violence that's caused by Democrat policies. Isn't it grand? So I'll play the rest of this for you in just a second here. But I want to respond to what we've seen so far. Do you remember when we talked about how you can lead someone very dishonestly to an inaccurate conclusion without ever telling an overt lie? You can only present them with factual information and do so deceptively to mislead them. And so there, you can always find footage of crimes being committed, or in that case, the disgusting oink oink thing, that, don't do that, or throwing something at somebody. And on Fox News, they constantly run footage of crimes being committed, and break-ins, and all this sorts of stuff, or a, a shoplifting. And they never actually say, some of them do, but they would never have to say crime is surging to convince their followers that crime is surging. So the conclusion is just as wrong as if they were just going around inaccurately saying crime is surging. She's saying democratic policies lead to violence. Biden's overseen one of the most rapid plummets in crime rates that we've seen in decades. Crime is now lower than it was under Trump. So if right now violence is out of control, then it was really under control under Trump even before the pandemic. And violent crime near more than 50-year lows. And at the beginning of 2024, that's already where we were in 2023, but the beginning of 2024, it's rapidly plummeting even more as we looked at the particulars of previously. So no, the Biden policy record is one of huge investments in public safety and huge plummets in crime. 
If you appreciate and enjoy the content that we make each day, I would greatly appreciate you for clicking that subscribe button. So it's time for everyone now in the GOP to acknowledge that Trump was right. He was right about the economy. He was right about the courts. He was right about the border, illegal aliens, China, and U.S. trade. And he's delivered tangible results, all while being hilarious and entertaining. And where are we? Yo, 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 I'm <laughs> Remember back in the uh, 1820s, you know your history, 1830s, Andrew Jackson ran for president three times. We had figures like John C. Calhoun and Henry Clay, Daniel Webster. Historian Arthur Schlesinger dubbed these years the age of Jackson. And if Trump wins 150 years from now, this will be referred to as the age of Trump. He dominates the policy debate in ways that no one has done since Reagan. It's not even close. And if he picks a strong VP, and we have every reason to believe he will, and if this new coalition becomes a governing coalition, well, it can be in power for 50 years. It could end up changing the world. And most importantly for us, for our kids, our grandkids, saving America. And that's the end. Okay. I know this is not what she meant, but it does sound given that we, we over here on the pro-democracy side of the conversation are sounding the alarm of the authoritarian threat of Trump. So it's interesting for her to say, and if they get in power this time, they could hold on to it for 50 years. I know she would say she meant democratically, but it also doesn't even make logical sense given that MAGA has proven to be toxic. So even if Trump eked out a win, it doesn't make any sense that the party would then be so unilaterally in power because of its popularity when Trump was very unpopular throughout his presidency and candidates that were hardcore MAGA, as we saw in the midterms, were politically toxic and lost time and time again. But the world is truly terrified. We're seeing this in reporting. Uh, our allies, world leaders, are terrified by this exact prospect. Really, we don't even need 50 years. I agree with her that MAGA and Trump in particular, if he got a second term, would change the world. It's just the worst imaginable change of the world. And that's, uh, that's where I differ from Laura Ingram. But 50 years of MAGA rule, freaky stuff. Now, this is also something that we'll see it in positions of power, like the presidency, obviously. But remember the impact on the Supreme Court. And we got a good example of how negative that impact is today. From New York Times, the Supreme Court on Friday struck down a ban on bump stocks enacted by the Trump administration, by Trump, after a deadly mass shooting in Las Vegas in 2017. And it, of course, was the conservatives split with the liberals on the court. And these bump stocks are attachments that enable a semi-automatic rifle to fire at a speed rivaling that of a machine gun, just slaughtering people. But somehow we need those just for private citizens. So the overturning of Roe v. Wade and decisions like this, that's the type of Supreme Court we're going to be dealing with for decades to come if Trump gets another term. And so what Laura Ingram is excited for, but really what she's warning the world about, is how much MAGA could be embedded into our political process. The harmful outcomes embedded, this ideology embedded into the courts and in so many ways for so long if we don't win in November. Yet another reason is so important. Now, the desperation to usher in that era from networks like Fox News and the New York Post and right-wing media, it's showing itself in full in the way that they're covering Biden so deceptively. Stunning. And what we'll get to is people making the point after I walk you through a bunch of things that surely this means that there isn't much that Fox News can actually criticize Biden on when it comes to the substance because they're relying on dishonesty, relying on surface level deceptive attacks. And the latest example of this is during Biden's trip to Europe. At every turn, I'll give you a few examples. At every turn, they've been attempting to make Biden look as bad as possible. And I'm yet to see an example of just an honest, honest presentation that makes him look as bad as they want him 
to look. And so the New York Post came out with a front page that says, Meander in chief, Biden embarrasses U.S. with confused wanderings at World Conference. And you can see that they very, okay, well, I mean, surely this is cropped there because there's nothing outside of that frame that could possibly answer as to why Biden's looking that direction. He must just be walking away. That's what they are trying to present. And then you have Fox News coverage like this. He's put the elder in elder statesman. President Biden giving another embarrassing brain addled performance on the world stage while in Italy for the G7 summit. The big guy must have thought it was still D-Day. He awkwardly saluted the Italian prime minister who was hosting the event. Another she quite literally smiled and giggled. He was just being like, huh. It's called interacting with people like humans, Janine. Sometimes you do something a little funky and goofy. Other startling moment, the president wandered away from the group of world leaders to go look at a skydiver and give them a thumbs up. Italy's leader was then forced to physically redirect the president's attention for a photo. Biden then holding a rare press conference with Ukraine's president. Okay, and then it goes on, but it's interesting how much work narration can do. How impactful your narration of a moment can be. You even had people with the RNC research account posting this as if something's wrong with this. Did you catch it? No, you didn't, because there was nothing to catch. The person who captioned this was saying, oh, there's something awkward about the way he was grabbing her hand. No, it was just two humans being humans. Goodness gracious. And then the one that's been getting, whoops, a bunch of traction has been what you saw, and I have something funny coming up for you, but what you saw a little bit of there with Janine Pirro. This clip posted by the New York Post you saw the photographs in their cover. They also posted this video, very interestingly cropped. And it looks like there's no audio, so I will narrate over it. Oh, he's wandering away. We don't even know what he's looking at. Oh no, where are you going, Joe? <laughs> Isn't this interesting? <laughs> now that you've seen the full clip, you know that there were people on the outside of that frame, okay. And then, of course, if you look at the full thing, you see that everyone's focusing on this skydiver. There's performance going on where they skydived and so they parachuted down. Very cool. And Biden wants to go say good job to the other parachuters. The other ones who were a little bit away from the group. And that's what he does. And then the Italian prime minister goes, oh, we're taking a photo. But apparently that's wandering off and not knowing what's going on. Now, we saw this also before Biden's speech in Normandy, where this video was something people made fun of, him turning around while the veterans were being honored because he had his back to veterans, as did the other uh, individuals there. And you'll watch, they notice Biden's turn around, they all turn around because they go, oh, you're right. We've been looking forward. Now let's turn around and honor the people behind us. It's interesting how, do you remember whenever MAGA was making fun of Biden for this phone call with Hunter Biden, where Hunter's uh, in the middle of his addiction, and so Joe Biden's saying, I'm there for you, I love you, and we're going to get through this. And for some reason, they made fun of it, but all it did was make Biden look like a good father. These moments are that too. Oh, he wandered off! And then when you uncrop the video, you see this because he's one to go and say hi to the other people who just performed for these world leaders. And then here it's because he noticed, maybe I should give a little respect to the people who are standing behind me and not just show them my back. So to me, it's actually an example of his uh, decency, not to toot his horn too much, but you also have this video. They got a ton of coverage from this same Normandy event. And what everyone said as we're watching this is that there guests, was no chair there. Please welcome 
the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin. So a bunch of people, I just had a conversation, funnily enough, with an Uber driver who said, I don't know, but Biden seems to be falling apart. He tried to sit down in an invisible chair. Everyone said, there's no chair there. There's no chair. Oh my gosh, there's no chair. But he thought there was a chair. Well, of course, in reality, as we already covered, there very much was a chair and he thought that people were sitting down, then everyone sat down. Oh, are we sitting down? Distinguished guests, please welcome the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin III. And we Secretary are. Secretary of Defense of the United States of America. And there is a chair. But all the clips were cut off right before he sat down in the chair so that people could say, oh, invisible chair. And again, we return to if you have to attack with this sort of dishonesty, then I guess at least you're making the point that there's nothing else to attack him on. You don't have better points against him if you're pretending like he was sitting in an invisible chair when there was obviously a chair there three seconds after the end of the clip that you posted. And Grant Stern made a really good point on Newsmax in response to a bunch of this. But as for the president and the G7 summit, he hasn't done anything wrong. The New York Post loves to deceptively edit videos. It shows their intellectual bankruptcy. They have nothing bad to say about President Biden, so they just have to make things up. Well, and that's pretty migration? sad. If you watch the entire video, there's things happening. President Biden is looking at them. The New York Post should be embarrassed by their selective video editing that they try to... Truly, they should. Now, in all transparency, this clip was not dishonestly edited. And it is hilarious as heck. <laughs> Standing still as a statue. But of course, if Biden started going like this, mm, get it, get it. I'm sure they'd have a problem with that, too. He's so unpresidential. Respect the office. Don't dance like that. But because he wasn't dancing, he was frozen. And uh, they always have, have some sort of issues. So there it is. This is the world now. Dishonesty everywhere you look. Let me know what you thought of all that in the comments. And uh, if you want to get the Daily Bonus Show, if you appreciate the work being done by myself and the incredible team around me, you can do so, or you can support that work by clicking the join button below.